You're listening to Wild About Arizona, the official podcast of the Arizona Game and Fish Department. And welcome to Wild About Arizona. I'm John Treeweiler with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Uh, Our topic today is the Desert Tortoise Adoption Program here at Arizona Game and Fish. And with us is Stacey Sosinski. She is the Wildlife Conservation Education Center Curator. Just a small title there, Stacey. (laughs) Welcome to the program. How are you today? Great. Thanks for having me. Of course. So tell us a little about your role here at Arizona Game and Fish. You have a pretty cool job. Yeah, I get to do a lot of a lot of cool things. Um, I oversee the Wildlife Center and its outreach programs, um, some of our teacher development programs, and the tortoise adoption uh, program and facility. And I work with a, an amazing team of four that coordinate these programs for me. And this is a pretty in-depth program, the Desert Tortoise Adoption Program that we have here. So tell us a little bit about uh, this program and kind of why we do it here in Arizona. Yeah, so the Arizona Game and Fish Department's been involved with the tortoise adoption program for 30 plus years. So back in the 70s, a disease called URTD, or Upper Respiratory Tract Disease, was first discovered in captive Mojave Desert tortoises, and then found in wild populations in the late 80s. It was then suspected that this disease had been spread from captive desert tortoises to the wild ones. So realizing this too could be a threat to our Sonoran desert tortoises population in Arizona, um, we devised a plan to help conserve and protect the wild populations. Since 1988, it's been against Arizona state law to collect desert tortoises from the wild. Mojave and Sonoran desert tortoises are protected throughout Arizona, and it is also illegal to breed desert tortoises and to release desert tortoises into the wild. So the Tortoise Adoption Program provides a place for desert tortoise owners to surrender their pets if they can no longer care for them. And for those who might find a lost pet desert tortoise, we have those a lot. (laughs) Um, And the program also helps educate the public on desert tortoises and their care. Um, The adoption program is really cool because it facilitates... um, like I said, uh, any surrendered captive desert tortoise into approved homes in Arizona. And anyone who meets the adoption application requirements and is approved can provide a forever home for one of the many tortoises that we receive each year. And per, per commission order 43, only one tortoise per person per household is allowed. And we also adopt out at our Phoenix headquarters location and also in Tucson at the Arizona Sonoran Desert Museum. And they've been a partner with us for many years as well. Okay, good to know. And, well, you kind of touched on it there because uh, we I want to learn a little bit more about the desert tortoise. And you there mentioned, there's two species right here in Arizona, and you said the Sonoran and the Mojave. Can you tell us about those, Stacy? Yeah, so we have two species of desert tortoises here in Arizona. Um, Like you said, the Mojave Desert Tortoise and the Sonoran Desert Tortoise. Um, These tortoises are really cool native reptiles. They have uh, domed shells and they have these little stumpy elephant looking legs as if and it looks like they're permanently smiling all the time. (laughs) Kind of like a dolphin. They've always got that that smile, right? Yep. Um, They eat only plants and they're solitary except during breeding encounters. And they live in the desert ecosystems in the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. Um, The majority of the desert tortoises that we receive at the facility and adopt out are the Sonoran desert tortoises. Desert tortoises can survive our extreme weather and drought by spending up to 95% of their life in a shelter or a burrow. That's incredible. They typically only emerge to feed, bask, and breed during the monsoon season. Okay. Which we didn't have this year. Yeah. So. <laughs> but so if it was a monsoon, that's a, a time of year when you would see probably a lot more desert tortoises? Yes. So they get out, they move around, they forage, they look for mates. Um, yeah, that's when we typically get a lot of found tortoises or calls about wild tortoises. And they, they live for a long time, don't they, Stacy? I mean, these animals, I mean, they can get up there in age, right? Yes, they can live up to 100 years old. Wow. Much longer than a cat or a dog. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so well, that kind of brings me to my next question here, because 
if people are interested in adopting a desert tortoise, because that's obviously, you know, what we're talking about, the adoption program, and maybe the desert tortoise already sounds like something they would enjoy having at their home. Uh, at least it's always got that smile, so they're always looking happy. Uh, what should they do if they're interested in adopting a desert tortoise? Because there, there are some steps and some things they need to do if they want to do that through us, right? Yes. The most important thing to do if you're interested in adopting a Sonoran Desert Tortoise is to research on how to care for that tortoise. And we have all that information on our website at www.azgfd.gov. And once you're confident and committed that you can provide the best forever home for the tortoise, build your burrow and create the habitat. It's a good plan to, to do this a few months out. Um, That way you can get edible and shade plants established before bringing home your tortoise. And once you have your habitat complete, then you can go back online and and to the adoption page and submit your application. And the cool part about this, I know you say forever homes. In some cases, these tortoises, they actually can outlive their owners, right? Yes, they can. But they do make great pets. Yes. Well, tell us what what is it like to have a desert tortoise as a pet? Because you already mentioned it. It's, it's definitely not a cat, definitely not a dog. What kind of pet does a desert tortoise make? Because I'm sure a lot of people who have never thought about having a desert tortoise maybe want to know that. Yes. So each tortoise I have found has its own personality. And over time, they can become quite attached to their caretaker. Like I said before... They can outlive a cat or a dog, but they also are much quieter than a cat or a dog. Um, And this is why many families, we find, end up caring for the same tortoise through many generations in that family, Okay, which is kind of cool. And while they don't need as much social attention as a dog or a cat, they still require a high level of care and, like I said, long-term commitment. Once set up and, and getting the tortoise maintained, the cost is very minimal to care for the tortoise although we do recommend getting a vet checkup twice a year once prior to the brumation period and once post brumation or when they come out of hibernation yeah because you like you said earlier for the majority of the year they stay in their their burrow right correct yeah so right now our tortoises are slowing down as i suspect many other captive tortoises are and in the coldest months tortoises brumate And this is uh, similar to hibernation in mammals, except it's more of a slowing down or a period of inactivity in the tortoises. The tortoises don't completely go to sleep. And that's why with these warmer, with warmer temperatures, occasionally you'll see them pop back out for a drink of water or something like that. Okay, and you're listening to Wild About Arizona. We are talking to Stacy from the Wildlife Education Center here at Arizona Game and Fish about desert tortoise adoption. We'll be right back. Stay informed about events and topics impacting over 800 species of Arizona wildlife by subscribing to Arizona Wildlife Views magazine. This beautiful publication blends compelling wildlife and outdoor recreation stories with spectacular photography. Every issue comes with bonus photo and video content and the popular Fairfield recipe for downloading. To subscribe to Arizona Wildlife Views, visit www.azgfd.gov slash magazine or call 1-800-777-0015. So if people are interested, they're still sounding interested, they, they, they'd like to adopt desert tortoise, what, when is the best time of year to prepare for adoption and to adopt? Because that does matter, right, Stacey? Um, actually... It does. Um, One of the great things about Arizona is our climate. And because of this, you can research, build a burrow, plant your plants, get approved at any time during the year. Applications are accepted year-round. However, during the coldest months, like I said, the tortoises brumate. So if we receive your application later in the season, you may be approved, and then you will be able to adopt then the following spring. Okay, so if you applied, say, fall or winter, maybe then you could be approved in the spring? Correct. We put your name on a waiting list, and then we have all those applications ready to go that have been approved, and that way we can adopt out as soon as the tortoises start waking up. 
But even if you do apply, say, in the fall or the winter months, there, it, there's still something you can do. It's a great time to really prepare for bringing your tortoise home. And I, I you know you guys always say that starts with building your burrow because that is something people need to do. How does that work? How, how do you even go about building a burrow in your backyard? Well, there's, uh, there's parameters, burrow parameters, and some guidance on our website. There's a nice little video on there on how to build your burrow. There's a couple different ways. Um, there are some other resources out there. There's some tortoise groups online where you can get some ideas of photos, um, pictures of some unique ways that people have kind of tackled building their burrow. The main thing is that we want that burrow, when it's finished, to be able to keep that tortoise at a comfortable 45 to 55 degrees during the winter. We don't want that tortoise to get too cold. And the same in the summer. We want the burrow to be insulated enough to keep them cool in the summer. Right. And this, it's not hard to build a burrow, is it? I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously a project, but, you know, it's not uh, super complicated. No, you can do it. You can do it in a couple hours in an afternoon once you collect your supplies. Um, Another important thing is to make sure in the habitat where you place your burrow is to make sure that there are some foraging plants that that are on our approved list online and also some shade, a couple of shade plants for the tortoise to get out of the summer heat. And as you mentioned, there is a video on how to do it. It's on our YouTube page, the Arizona Game and Fish Department's YouTube channel. We have a video there on how to build a burrow. So it walks you through it step by step on exactly what you need to do. Yes. Um, Stacy, how, how many desert tortoises do we care for here at the department? And how many do we adopt out about each year? At any given time, we're caring for between 50 and 100. Okay. Um, and on average, we receive uh, between us and the Desert Museum three to four hundred tortoises a year wow. that are surrendered to us, and we adopt out between two and three hundred and fifty a year. So you say receive? Where do the where do these desert tortoises uh, come from? Great question. <laughs> So many folks think that all the tortoises we, we, that we adopt out are taken from the wild, but this isn't true. Okay. While some of the older tortoises that we receive maybe have originally come from the wild, back when it was not illegal to take tortoises from the wild, they're technically now captive tortoises that cannot be released back to the wild. of the tortoises that we receive at the adoption facility are either surrendered or found pets. And almost all of the hatchlings we receive are from illegal breeding of desert tortoises, which still frequently occurs, unfortunately. Okay. Um, And that's a great point because it brings me to my next question, Stacey, and it's because we do have desert tortoises that live in the wild here in Arizona, and it's not uncommon that someone could come across a desert tortoise in the wild. And I know we always, of course, say, you know, leave wildlife wild, but can you kind of reiterate that for us and what someone should do if they do come across a desert tortoise in the wild? Certainly. So if you find a tortoise, um, we want you to use your best judgment and to evaluate whether that tortoise is wild or potentially an escaped captive tortoise. A lot of captive tortoises that at least have come through the adoption program have a small number tag attached to the shell. If you find a tortoise with a tag, then it is a former pet. And if you do that, then you need to call us Um, at our tortoise adoption main number and that's 844-896-5730 and we can help either try and place that tortoise or find its original owner if you are far from houses and um or adjacent to like a wild area something like that you should assume the tortoise is wild and you should leave it alone especially if you don't see a tag or anything on it just correct let it be don't even try to pick it up And we have had an occasion where people have done that um, and contacted us. So we just had a situation last year where we had a wild tortoise that was picked up by a well-meaning person. 
And what we did was we then were able to work with that person and our wildlife managers and our biologists to identify the location of where that tortoise was found. And because we only had had that tortoise for a short period of time, we were we were able to take it back out and release it back to the wild. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so that's always a nice outcome when we can do that. Absolutely. Um, anything we're missing here, Stacy, that I haven't asked you about as far as it relates to desert tortoises or the desert tortoise adoption program here in Arizona Game and Fish that you want to mention? Well, we're like I, like we mentioned before, we're always taking applications. So yep. if you've been thinking about um, a desert tortoise for a pet, um, you can give us a call at our main number, um, and that's 844-896-5730 if you have questions, whether you meet the requirements. Um, or you can go online to our website, www.azgfd.gov forward slash tortoise, and that will give you all of the information that you need to know to create a habitat and a burrow for your future shelled friend. And maybe more people are interested in doing that now after we've spent the last several uh, minutes here talking about desert tortoises. Maybe people are excited about it because they do make great pets, right? They do. They do. Well, fantastic. Stacy. thanks so much for talking to us. And as you mentioned, a ton of resources on our website at azgfd.gov uh, forward slash tortoise. And then, of course, on the Arizona Game and Fish Department's YouTube channel, there is that video of how it shows you, walks you through the steps of building your own burrow. Stacy. thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Visit us online at www.azgfd.gov. Dot gov.